Hello and welcome to Faith and Friends. I'm Andy Lynch alongside Mark Kuntz. But where's Jennifer? I could say she's climbing a mountain in Nepal or deep sea diving in the Indian Ocean, but she's standing by with a special interview. Oh. Hi. She's over there. She'll be joining us in a few minutes interviewing a missionary who is home in Ohio, but just for a few short weeks. That's just one of the special stories we have for you on today's show. Gary Russell, the Mexico Caravan Ministries. Also today, we're back in the kitchen. Today, it's a no-bake healthy breakfast cookie. Possibly a good alternative for all of you who need a decent breakfast on the run. Plus, we've got three great giveaways to announce. That and more coming up on today's Faith and Friends. But as we always like to start with Scripture, we're Focusing on the biblical virtue of quality of virtue, I should say, or moral uprightness once again this week. It's all part of the 2016 Faith Challenge derived from 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 5 through 7. We encourage you to take some time to really pour over those verses today. Meanwhile, here are some other verses that do also talk about virtue. Proverbs 10, verses 6 through 11. Blessings crown the head of the righteous, but violence overwhelms the mouth of the wicked. The name of the righteous is used in blessings, but the name of the wicked will rot. The wise in heart accepts commands, but a chattering fool comes to ruin. Whoever walks in integrity walks securely, but whoever takes crooked paths will be found out. Whoever winks maliciously causes grief, and a chattering fool comes to ruin. The mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life. The mountain of the wicked conceals violence. Certainly some wise words there as they really take two, par two differences and, and compare them. You know, which side are we on as we live our lives? Certainly their goal was to be the mouth of the righteous, a fountain of life. And on Sunday, January 17th, it marked an important day for pro-life supporters in the city of Lima as the annual March for Life gave them the opportunity to remind pregnant mothers and their families, we are here for you and we care about you. Dozens brave descending temperatures to walk from the heartbeat of Lima satellite office on South Elizabeth Street in Lima to the meeting place on Market and then back. January is Sanctity of Life Month, and this was just one of several activities taking place in the TV44 viewing area as a way to honor the unborn and encourage pregnant mothers to choose life over abortion. Heartbeat of Lima director Patty Kennedy wants those in the community to know that Heartbeat offers free ultrasounds parenting classes, adoption classes, diapers, clothing, and other incentives. Well, Heartbeat is striving to share the love of Jesus with those right here in our own community. Jennifer is with an Ohio native who's fulfilling his calling of sharing Jesus' love with individuals in an area just south of the California border. Thank you guys. Well, our In the Community segment actually takes us far out of the community today, all the way to Tijuana, but our guest does have Ohio roots. Gary Russell is with us this week. Gary, thank you so much for being here on Faith and Friends. My pleasure. You are a missionary in Tijuana, but that isn't where your story begins. Let's start from the beginning and just uh, tell us the steps in your life that God used to get your attention. Well, the biggest step was being raised in a Christian home with godly parents that dragged me to church every week. I, I, we went Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and I pretty much hated it. I knew that God loved me. I knew the Bible. I could answer all the Sunday school verses, but I never got the message of discipleship and let other things distract me and never was focused on the Lord. Sports were very important to me, and by the time I was a senior in high school, they were everything and I had dedicated my life really to, the, to football, high school football. And I told the Lord, I will serve you when I'm old like 30. I'm not, I'm doing my own thing now. And that first game my senior year of high school, I had a really good start, scouts and families are watching and my name's in the papers and all this. And then the last play of the half, my, I suffer an acute subdural hematoma. I collapse going off the field end up in the hospital and they tell mom and dad I may not live through the night. So that's, that's at 18, 17, 18 years 17 old? 17 years old. So the doctors came back and said they expected 100% recovery and that never happened and still hasn't. When I woke up from surgery, I was totally blind mm -hmm. and I was that way for two weeks. Two weeks after my parents pastor came and prayed for me and the next day I could see. Wow. It was double vision at first and very narrow. I have about 10% visual field and I don't recognize faces, I don't drive, and I'm pretty poor with directions. But God did not 
stop you at that point? That was really a starting point. It was. I knew that the Lord had saved me. I mean, that was like the third time he had saved me <laughs> and spared my life. And so I knew that there was something out there. In fact, I woke up saying, God has a plan for my life. But again, it's that discipleship message that didn't really happen. So I go through the rest of high school and I'm still not focused on Jesus. That didn't happen until I went away to college. I went to Bowling Green State University. I'm blind. My parents are like, I'm not sure. How's this going to go? And the Lord works it out to where I can live with a cousin who is a Christian. And he wants to go to the Christian organizations. And I think, well, that'll be cool because there's probably a lot of young ladies there. <laughs> and instead of uh, young ladies, I met Jesus that <laughs> first year. And I started reading my Bible and hanging out with people who were unashamed of the gospel and telling people about him. And I knew that if I, need, if I was going to live with those guys, then I needed to change my behavior. But it happened from the inside out through my reading of the Bible. I imagine we have parents at home who are watching this who recognize either they were in your position or they have children in their position. We're, they're taking them to church. They're doing all of those things. Um, their kids are enamored in sports. I mean, it's, it's a normal American life right. to get lost into, but yet you go off to Bowling Green State University to get an education and you meet Jesus. And I met Jesus and he blew me away. And prior to that time, every day I prayed, God, forgive me, I know I'm a sinner. I know I deserve hell, forgive me. And after that time, after he washed me, I mean, he washed me through his word, I don't have to fear. I know I live in peace and joy and every, certainly not peaches and cream every day, but I don't have that fear of him. He loves me. He accepts me. So you grew up in a Christian home. You had the, the incident with football. You had a major car accident too, major right? Major car accident when I was 14 years old. Okay, so that was before the football mm -hmm. accident. Um, a lot of things were happening. God was probably working to get your attention. You weren't quite there yet. It wasn't there yet. You get to Bowling Green Street University. Jesus takes over your life and becomes Lord of your life. And then what happens next? Well, what happened next was I did meet a young lady at that Christian group and I married her. And then we went to Bible college and we were in ministry for about seven years, but that never really worked for us. We were, I was always working full time to support my habit of ministry, but I was not able to make adequate income. So after about seven years, we ended up uh, leaving the ministry, moving back to Ohio from New England, and basically felt like a failure. I mean, we had went to do something, we had gone to do something, and we didn't succeed. So we came home, I got my master's in clinical pastoral counseling to enable me to support the habit of ministry, and then I got a job with the state of Ohio, helping people with disabilities get jobs. But I was on that job for 10 years. And so there was a, a huge frustration in my life because I feel like, I felt like God had something for me that I wasn't able to tap into. Mm. And so I lived with this constant tension. Is there more? Is there, am I forgotten? You know, Moses on the backside of the desert for 40 years before he went back to Egypt, uh, Joseph in prison though my suffering was certainly not like theirs. There was a tension there. Well, we're gonna find out more what Gary was going through and how God continued to lead him and where he is now and how God is using him now. I sense that some of you at home probably are in that very same situation where you realize you know God has something for you, but you cannot figure out how to get there and you don't even really, really know what it is. Well, don't go away. We are going to hear more from Gary in just a moment, but now it's time for our Lost Creek Care Center stop in the kitchen. Matt, Andy, and Mark are tackling a food idea that you might just want to try for your breakfast. Matt. Thank you, Jennifer. Gary, a big sports fan, so how fitting. Now you've got a sports guy talking food. Our recipe today is for no-bake healthy breakfast cookies, recipe courtesy of Chelsea Messi's apron. We'll share the website with you later in this segment. You'll only need seven ingredients, a microwave or a stove top, some optional chocolate if you want to sweeten things up a bit. Here are the ingredients we have for today's recipe. Creamy peanut butter, honey, vanilla, salt, rice crispy cereal, flaxseed flour, old fashioned oats, and we do have some chocolate here, but remember that is of course optional. You can also add some raisins, 
chopped mini nuts, mini chocolate chips, or craisins if you want to even more to your no-bake breakfast cookies. So Wait, guys, you can have cookies for breakfast? Yeah, apparently, no-bake too. Let's I've get to work. I've spotted a problem. We don't have Rice Krispies. We have crispy rice. We have what are we going to do? Well, it's the same. Rice Krispies is the cereal, so we're good to go. Hey, I got it. I got it. <laughs> there you go. Rice Krispies. <laughs> it, perfect. So let's get to work, Andy. I'm going to, in this medium-sized bowl here, you're going to combine the peanut butter, which we've pre-measured out. Thank you for the doing honey. that, by the way. Yes, that's very crucial to this. We'll add in the honey, the vanilla, and the salt. And you can also microwave this for 20 to 30 seconds, and then we're going to stir until it's all combined. Peanut so we got butter, the peanut butters in there. Honey? The honey. How much are we doing for the honey? The honey, we want two tablespoons. Like that, maybe? Yeah, that's... A little more? <laughs> that looks good to me. I don't okay. know. That might be a lot. I'm not really sure. You have an the, eye eyeball, for, the eyeball test of two tablespoons. You're better with the metrics, though, yeah. aren't you? <laughs> I'm a metric system guy. What that's was right. the last thing? The last honey? thing was uh, vanilla and the salt. And the vanilla, we're looking for one teaspoon. So again, Andy, your best eye test, sure. <laughs> Never have too much vanilla. You're right. It's splashing onto the recipe as oh, well. Oh, so. sorry. It makes no, it authentic, that's, Yes, right? that's great. Now it salt. looks like we actually worked on it. And for salt, we want Black a sea? pinch of salt. And this is just optional. I don't see salt. Okay, we're going we're gonna to pass on the salt then. I'll put a little flaxseed in. How about yeah, that? Yeah, we'll start stirring actually, oh, and we're going to add that later on. And we want to stir until this is all combined. Can you use a wooden spoon and a... Heated pot? I believe so, yeah. yeah. You're doing it right now. I guess so. So, yeah. All right, we're stirred, kind of. We want to make it like creamy. All together, yeah. The peanut butter is already creamy enough, but yeah. Another 10, 15 seconds of stirring. And then in that same bowl, Mark, we're going to add the Rice Krispie cereal, right. which Andy has flipped on its head. There we are. The flaxseed. How much flaxseed? I think the, the flaxseed wasn't pre measured, so we're going to go one quarter cup. Oh, maybe it was actually. Or no, one quarter cup. <laughs> That'd be way too much. You never have too much flax <laughs> yeah. seed. You can't right? have too much flax One seed. quarter cup of the flax seed and then the oats. That was pre-measured for us. Luckily, you can see some of this was pre-measured for us three sports guys who are not the best <laughs> at cooking. So that speak was just, for yourself, yeah. Matt. Well, all right, I'll speak for only for myself. You're the expert, though. Okay, so then we can add on our um, optional add-ins if desired. I think we have our chocolate out here, so let's throw some of that in. And it is coming together. Maybe Andy, you can tilt it. Much, maybe. maybe tilt it a little so they could get a look. Yeah, there. That looks like a clump more than a bar. Well, we're cookie. gonna. The next step is to cookie. form balls with our form a ball shape with what we've had in our bowl here, Do you have any and then the other flatten add it. We didn't have any other add-ins, but of course you could add raisins, chopped up nuts, craisins. We went with the mini chocolate chips, but Go keep ahead, stirring. There, Mark. Keep stirring while it's Mark gets started. And then just form it into a ball shape and then flatten it into a cookie shape. And if desired, you can even melt three tablespoons of milk chocolate chips in the microwave. Uh -huh. Put the melted chocolate in a small Ziploc bag and drizzle it on. That looks real professional. I don't know you if we do that all the time. Over definitely Delphus. never done that before in my life, but <laughs> today would have been a good time to try it out. And then these cookies will be ready to eat. Mark's got them on that plate over there. Good? Can you just eat it right away or does it? Yeah, you can eat so it. So you really don't have right. to make it into the cookie shape. You can no, you can eat it out of, out of a ball, but if we're, yeah, we call it a cookie. We want it to look like a cookie. It's What's really the good. verdict, Andy? Really good. You can store these for four to five days, freeze them for up to three months. Look at that. In what, five minutes, would you say? Less than five minutes, we had Just like no that. bake. So about cookies. 500 times more than it takes you to bowl, pour a bowl of cereal. Yes. <laughs> so you're saying you wouldn't eat cookies for breakfast, Mark? I would rather have the cereal. All right. Can Andy, what about milk? you? Can I pour milk over them? Oh, then you're, now we're combining and we got cookie cereal. I don't see, I don't think, I don't, I don't have like a problem with that. Crunch, yeah. yeah. All right, Jennifer, how do we do? <laughs> Back to you. Thank you, Matt. You three guys are quite the chefs. I think you've got something going on there. Well, let's hear more from Gary Russell's story. You heard his upbringing, grew up in church, grew up with sports, had a car accident a major football injury, lost his vision, still was able to go to college despite all that, and that's where he met Jesus and changed his life. But just like so many of us, he knew he had the passion to do something. God was calling him to do something, but he had a family to provide for. He had to figure out how to make all of this work. Certain things weren't working. God, where are you? And what is your plan for the Russell family and Gary's life? Well, Gary, let's talk more. Let's jump now to 2007 and you get an opportunity to travel to Mexico. So I'm working for the state of Ohio, Opportunities for Ohioans with Disabilities, and 
my church says they're going on a mission trip to Tijuana, Mexico, and, and they bill it as this house building ministry. And so we go down and we build these 12 by 12 and 12 by 16 shelters. So that's smaller than most of our bedrooms. And whole families will live in them. Mm -hmm. And, but when I was down there, I was like trying to figure out what exactly we're doing. Because we did build houses. We built, our team built four houses. You build a whole house in a day. And then we had like six or eight teams. So we built six or eight houses a day for four days. And, but the teaching is what Caravan Ministries, Mexico Caravan Ministries exists for. And, and there are two strong messages. The first is that Jesus wants all of your life. When Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me, that wasn't a half-hearted image. That wasn't a pretty necklace that you wear on your neck. It was, it was the instrument of death. It was the execution. When someone was carrying their cross, they weren't planning dinner or their vacation or thinking about tomorrow. And that's what, how Jesus calls us to live. And so that's the first message that we have at Caravan. And the second one is that there are still th over 3,000 specific social linguistic groups of people that have no access to the gospel. So we're talking 2.5 billion people, almost a third of the world's mm -hmm. population has no access to the gospel. And no access means they don't have a Christian coworker, they don't have a Bible that they can pick up, there's not a church on the corner. We, as the church, have to take Jesus' last words very seriously. He said, go and make disciples. Before the resurrection, Jesus talked about all kinds of different subjects, from family to finances to farming, you name it, he talked about it. But after the resurrection, and you can look it up, he only talked about go and make disciples. He wants his people back. God sent the Son, the, Sp the Son sent the Spirit, and the Holy Spirit sends you and me. And that is our mandate to go to them. And God calls each one of us to a different location. Some of us may be called just into our region because obviously there are people here who Absolutely. need to hear Christ. But God called the Russell family to Tijuana, Mexico. It took four trips. Mm. What was God doing to you in your life as that was happening? I would come home and be so miserable at my life. I mean, I was so frustrated with my job. God, there's something more. There's got to be more. And I would, I, would, I would make the calls to the mission agencies, and I finally said to one of them, I said, do you get a, a lot of calls after short-term trips? And they were like, yeah. People come home, they're excited, and then it, it dwindles. You know, we get distracted in this culture, and mm -hmm. we see so many different things, and we start chasing the American dream instead of what Christ's dream is. And so in, thir in 12, I took a trip. It was my fourth time down there. And on Monday, I wrote in my journal, I said, God, I'm not doing it this year. You're a big God. If you want me in China or Timbuktu, I'm willing to go. But I'm not making a single call. I'm not going to do anything to make it happen myself. You want it, you do it. Fine. The very next day, I walk into the room, and our director, Eddie Passmore, him and his wife, direct the ministry. And he says, how you doing? And I said, I don't know. I still want to go, but nothing seems to happen. And what seemed to me kind of off the cuff, he says, well, it's not the 1040 window but have you ever thought about coming here? And I about burst into tears at the moment, and I'm like, I'm in. You know? and, and eight months later, we moved three of our children down. We left our oldest, who was a senior in high school at the time, and with my parents, and we moved to Tijuana, Mexico. So you moved from Ohio, Tijuana, Mexico. Weather's a little bit different. It's a little nicer there. We have sun about 360 days a year. Ah, oh, well, you're, you're here in Ohio on our cold streak. And we haven't seen the sun in days. <laughs> but you know what? God can work anywhere. Amen. God is obviously working. Uh, give us a brief. We're almost running out of time, but I have two more questions I want to ask you. And first of all, give us a brief look at now. How is God working now in Tijuana, Mexico with your family and with the Mexico Caravan Ministries? Well, as a ministry, we mobilize Christ followers for missions. And so we bring in interns, and they come and work for three months to 15 months. And they are in a st strong discipleship program. They're memorizing scripture. They're living in community. Uh, one of the big problems that I've noticed living there for myself was that even though I thought I had friends and relating with people in the States, I wasn't really submitted to people. I didn't live in that community. And we think we have to do it ourselves, and I'm pretty bad at that. And I'm learning that I have to rely on other people. I cannot even walk with Christ by myself successfully. Mm. I need other people. 
Wow, that's, that's, that's a strong message and that is really important for us to be hearing. And finally, Gary, I wish we could talk much longer. I would love to hear more about the things that God is doing, but for the people at home who are saying, I know that God is stirring me somewhere, but I'm worried about the money and I'm worried about the distance. I'm worried about leaving family. I don't know how to truly hear what God is calling me to do. Do you have any advice for them? My advice is to stay in the word and get around people. We think it's impossible to go be missionaries because we may not know any, but they're out there. And if you seek them, seek those people, get the people around you, stay close to Jesus and kind of surround yourself with godly people. Anything is possible. All right, well, you are living proof of that. It's incredible. Amen. I'm thankful that God saved you in those times in that car accident and that football accident. God obviously was preparing. Uh, you may not have known it then, but mm. You know, and we, we will know in heaven exactly how many people are impacted because of your faithfulness. Thank you, Gary. Of course, you can find out more about the Mexico Caravan Ministries. Uh, right there is the family website, russellmexicoadventure.com. They are, um, you can always support them as well. As you know, missionaries are constantly in need of financial and prayer support. And you can find out more about the ministry itself, Mexico Caravan Ministries. All right. Time to move on in our show. We'll pass it back to Andy. Thank you, Jennifer. Of course, the new year. We have new giveaways this year, three of them to be exact on this particular show. The first, a set of two tickets to hear Luke Zamperini speak. He's the son of Louis Zamperini. Luke will be at Nice Swanger Performing Arts Center in Van Wert, March the 6th. Second giveaway is tickets for two to hear Natalie Grant. Contemporary Christian singer will also be at the Nice Swanger in March, March 20th to be exact. And our third giveaway is a set of these books that were written by Natalie Grant. The adventure stories are published by Zonder Kids. They're aimed toward girls ages 8 through 12. We'll have much more on these books in the weeks to come. So Mark, how, how, how does someone win? Well, it's quite simple. Just go to our website, faithandfriends.wtlw.com. Click on contest, enter the required information, and indicate which contest you are entering. Now, the drawing for the Luke Zamperini tickets will be on February 19th. Drawing for the Natalie Grant items will be March 11th. 2016 Faith Challenge continues this week, and we are continuing our talk on virtue. This year's Faith Challenge is derived from 2 Peter 1, verses 5 through 7, which includes quite a list of character qualities. And right now, we're focusing on the first one. In the weeks to come, we will study each trait. Pay attention to TV44 all week long as we bring you a variety of verses that focus on the topic of virtue. What area in your life keeps coming to mind? Is there something in your life that is not morally in line as it should be? Maybe an area of your thinking? Should you be more positive in your actions to a specific person? If this keeps coming to mind, you know it might be the Holy Spirit urging you on, urging us on to ponder it and to seek how God is directing us to change those aspects of our lives. Are you taking the 2016 Faith Challenge? Let us know by sending an email to faithandfriends at wtlw.com. Call us or write us and simply say, I'm taking that Faith Challenge. We're certainly excited about that and also excited about continuing Christ's mission, our campaign, which is coming to a close. What a, what a great campaign it's been. Absolutely, and thanks to many of you who are partnering with us to do so in 2016, like Ms. Carla Smith from St. Mary's and a uh, nice donation from Herod, Ohio, and Ms. Dolores Wilson from Continental with a gift as well. Mr. and Mrs. James Searfoss in Genera, thank you so much for your gift. The Williams family in Kenton and Mrs. Linda Muth in Wapakoneta. Take a look at the size of these response cards, and these are just the ones of the people who allow us to read the name on air. We have another stack of those of you who say, ah, oh, I wanna be a bar, but we don't, I'd rather you not say our name, and we're fine with that. But goodness gracious, thank you. Thank you so very much for your faithfulness. We certainly appreciate your partnership through prayer, volunteering, and your financial giving. Just a reminder, there are simple ways to connect to TV44 in the area of giving, like many of these folks have. You can donate by mail or in person at 1844 Beatty Road, Lima, Ohio, 45807. You can donate over the phone with your credit card at 419-339-4444, online at WTLW.com. You can also sign up for monthly automatic withdrawal by emailing contact at WTLW.com. You can always call us to find out more information. Before we go, let's take a look back at our verses for today's show as they come from Proverbs 10, verses 6 through 11. 
Blessings crown the head of the righteous, but violence overwhelms the mouth of the wicked. The name of the righteous is used in blessings, but the name of the wicked will rot. The wise in heart accept commands, but a chattering fool comes to ruin. Whoever walks in integrity walks securely, but whoever takes crooked paths will be found out. Whoever winks maliciously causes grief, and a chattering fool comes to ruin. The mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, but the mouth of the wicked conceals violence. As we took a look at virtue today, as we have the last several weeks, as we continue with the 2016 Faith Challenge. I certainly hope that you accept that challenge. Don't consider it as a challenge, consider it as an opportunity because God wants you to do great things in all of our lives this year. And starting with meditating on scripture is a key way to get that going. Have a great week.